This is certainly one of the strangest guitar solos I've ever heard. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Molly and in this video I am going to be listening to the album Pisces Iscariot by The Smashing Pumpkins. Now this is technically not an official studio album by The Smashing Pumpkins. It's a compilation album that consists of some b-sides and outtakes of their stuff. But you guys kept telling me that I had to check this one out, that it's got some fantastic tracks on it. And they released this one in 1994, so after their second studio album Siamese Dream, but before their third studio album Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. So yeah, I'm really excited to hear this one and see what I'm going to think of. Pisces Iscariot. All right, so starting off with track one is Soothe. Is he saying harm me again? I think those are the lyrics. There's something really kind of depressive about this song. It's got like this mellowness to it, but at the same time, it's really relaxing too. That was track one, Soothe. A very appropriate track title, that's for sure. It definitely had a soothing quality to it, very relaxing to listen to. It definitely did kind of remind me of something that you would have heard on Siamese Dream, just a little bit more stripped down and bare bones. It kind of reminded me a bit of the track Disarm, kind of a similar quality to it with that sort of melancholy nature to it. But I'm gonna move on now to track two, which is called Frail and Bedazzled. Okay, this one's bringing a little bit more punchiness now to it, more of an upbeat quality. I love how it just stopped like that. I love all of the dynamics with this one. Like that part there was just his vocals. There was absolutely nothing else. And then they just brought in all of this punchiness again. That was track two, Frail and Bedazzled. The drums and the guitars both on that song were so much fun. They were just going all over the place. I loved how they were starting it and stopping it so suddenly. And his vocals too, he kept doing like some higher pitched things with his voice, just a lot kind of all over the place with its sound. But moving on to track three is Plume. Really unique start. I love the fuzziness, that distortion on the guitar. This guitar, man, it's got such a weird tone going on. There's like a screechiness to it. Yeah, there's such a haziness to this song. That's the best word I can come up with to describe its sound. It's like there's this really thick blanket of sound almost with that distortion. I love it. That was track three, Plume. I loved that one. They just created a fantastic sound with all of that distortion and everything. It was kind of heavy sounding for a Smashing Pumpkin song. I don't know what it was. It just had like this denseness to it. In a way, at times, the guitars were almost reminding me of Deftones a little bit. Like they had all of that distortion and atmosphere going on. Up next is track four, which is called Were. Yeah. 
There's such a delicateness to this song. I love it. really enjoying this one. It has such a laid back quality to it. Kind of like a warm summer day vibe to its sound. That was track four, Were. That one was fantastic. Again, I can't believe that is on a B-Sides album. To me, that definitely sounds like it could be on one of their like official studio albums. Such a warmth to its tone and like a relaxed nature to how they were doing the instrumentals. But I'm gonna move on to track five, which is Blue Away. Sounds like there's a harmonization going on here with the vocals. I love how he just said, I think it was wither and I fall. And the guitar kind of had that falling sound to it. This one's kind of reminding me of that last track, Were, how it has this really laid back gentleness to it. There's something kind of beachy almost about the sound of this song. Okay, this is changing it up a little bit. Now that fuzzy distortion is back on this one. It's almost like kind of My Bloody Valentine-esque a little bit. That was track five, Blew Away. I love how that one kind of picked up intensity there at the end and they brought in more of that punchy instrumental with that distortion. But the beginning of that track was yet again, like really relaxed and very warm with its tone. His vocals I noticed were kind of different on that one too. They kind of had this sort of harmonizing quality to him. Just a different effect to his voice on that one that I was noticing. Moving on to track six is Pissant. Man, there's a lot of speediness to this one. It's definitely picking up the momentum. There was like this boingy, springy effect I just heard. That was track six, Pissant. Such a speediness, like a quickness to that one. And I loved all of the creative stuff that they were doing with the instrumentals. Like you had that boingy effect I kept picking up on and the guitars were doing some really unique things too. Even though they do often bring a more melancholy and serious tone to their music, they find a really good balance between that and kind of a more upbeat, playful side to their sound. Moving on to track seven is Hello Kitty Cat. His vocals sound really pushed back on this one. They're kind of being drowned out a little bit by this wall of instrumentation and this distortion yet again. I don't even know what that was. It almost sounded like a bagpipe or something. I'm loving the percussion on this one. It's bringing so much energy to it. That 
That was track seven, Hello Kitty Cat. Just a ton of energy with that one. And yet again, with the creativity, like all of these sounds going on, they just blend it together though, in a really cohesive way. It was almost like that song just swept you up in this tornado of noise. It was just so much going on. Up next is track eight, which is Obscured. I love the percussion on this one. It almost sounds like they're knocking on a piece of hollow wood. <laughs> That's kind of what it sounds like. I love how that last track was just a chaos of noise, like a storm going on. And this one, he's talking about being at home tonight, and it has this really relaxed, soothing quality. It's almost in a way the calm after the storm, like everything has settled. There's a second guitar I'm hearing that's just doing some funky stuff in the background very faintly. That was track eight, Obscured. Beautiful, beautiful song. Such a gentleness to that one. I love how fuzzy his voice was too. It kind of had this very slight muffledness to it that just added to that really soft atmosphere of that song. All right, moving on to track nine is Landslide. Okay, so this one is a cover of Fleetwood Mac's song. His voice really does have such a unique tone to it. It has this really clear and kind of high and open quality to its sound. I've never really heard another singer with a vocal delivery like his. It's just really unique. I love his vocal delivery on the word snow. It almost adds like a fragility to his voice. That was track nine, Landslide. A beautiful cover of a beautiful song. I don't know if it quite beats the original by Fleetwood Mac for me personally, but I definitely thought the Smashing Pumpkins did a great job of bringing their own unique quality to it, but staying true to the original at the same time. His voice, in my opinion, was really suited for that too. He has a really emotive quality to his voice, and that song kind of requires a certain emotional impact to it, and he was definitely bringing that. There was almost like a waveriness to his voice at times that kind of brought more of an emotional impact to that song. All right, moving on, we have track 10, which is called Starla. I love that instrumental that's going up like that. All right, now they're introducing the percussion here. They're definitely slowly building this track up. They're adding all of these layers. I love that percussion very faintly. That was unexpected. That infusion of electric guitar all of a sudden. Yeah. 
This is certainly one of the strangest guitar solos I've ever heard. They're just doing so many odd things with the noise here and all of this distortion. Now it's like you're getting plunged underwater or something. What just happened? It was like that song just got switched off and then that little acoustic bit came in at the very end there before it faded out. But that was track 10, Starla, just an 11 minute smorgasbord of sound basically. It started off really cool how they were layering it up, like they were building it up slowly into that punch of energy. And then it transitioned suddenly from that into the acoustic bit there in the middle. And then the end of that song was just this barrage of sounds and noises and experimentation going on. They definitely push the envelope very, very far in terms of what they do with their sound, which I always love with their music. It's always unexpected. You never really know what you're going to get. Moving on to track 11 is Blue. For a split second, the beginning there just reminded me of Wood by Alice in Chains with that bass. I love how the tempo of this song is changing. It was so quick and speedy there and then they just slowed it down and now the speediness is back. Again, I love the fuzziness of this song. I feel like I'm kind of floating up in space or something at this part. That was track 11, Blue. So much back and forth on that one. It had parts that were very relaxing. They kind of had this trance-inducing quality to them, but then they would bring that punchiness and it kind of woke you up out of that. And they were going back and forth so much on that song. But moving on to track 12 is A Girl Named Sandoz. I love the bass right off the start here. That was really shining through. guitar. There's a lot of like spunkiness, kind of an attitude to this song. It's almost reminded me of the White Stripes a little bit. This one's just like an attack. It's bringing so much energy to it. And then it kind of has this bounciness to it as well, which I like, a sort of springiness. Well, that was track 12, A Girl Named Sandoz. That one was crazy, very intense with its delivery, just kind of coming at you with all of this noise and vibrato. His voice, he was just doing a lot of different things with it, so many different vocal styles. There was those parts where he would lower it a lot, it got really deep and the song would kind of slow down for a couple of seconds. Up next is track 13, which is called La Dolly Vita. There's something about the instrumentals on this track. It's reminiscent to me of flowers blooming. It has this really warm vibrancy to it. All right, I just heard two vocalists there for a split second. instrumentals just 
flows so beautifully. I don't know how they do it on all of these tracks. They just are melded together fantastically. They work so well. All right, and now this percussion is just bringing so much intensity, man. That was track 13, La Dolly Vita. To me, it was reminiscent of kind of laying out on a beach, like these waves slowly meandering in and out and the sun's beaming down on you. Just such a warm, summery vibe to it. But then at the end with those drums and everything, it was almost like a tidal wave all of a sudden just ripped its way onto shore. But I'm gonna move on to the final song on Pisces Iscariot, which is track 14 called Spaced. So much vocal distortion. It's kind of reminiscent of like a countdown before a rocket launch. There's something about this song, it's almost like you're underwater and floating out in space at the same time. That was track 14, Spaced. Definitely an interesting ending for that album, that's for sure. A ton of distortion going on with the vocals. It had this really echoey sort of outer space quality to it. And just something very untethered about that song. It just reminded me of like flying through the air with nothing holding you down. Well, that concludes my reaction to Pisces Iscariot, the compilation album from the Smashing Pumpkins. I'm really glad you guys were telling me to listen to this thing before I move on to Melancholy in my reaction series because Pisces Iscariot has some fantastic tracks on it. True to Smashing Pumpkins music style, this thing was so varied and experimental. I never knew what to expect with any of the tracks because they always would bring a new sound on each one. I loved all of the heaviness and distortion they utilized on track three, Plume. That one just kind of had a different style for Smashing Pumpkins that I really got into. And track four, Were, was beautiful. That one had such a tenderness, a lightness to it that I really enjoyed. That was for sure a standout. And I really liked track 12, A Girl Named Sandoz as well. That one just had so much punchiness and energy. But a fantastic listen from beginning to end. And now I look forward to hearing Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, which is their third studio album. So so I am definitely getting myself prepared to hear that one. But yeah, as usual, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.